Hello, my name is Matt. I'm an illustrator and a dungeon master, and I'm illustrating my campaign as we play through it. Um, I'll be showing you today a few techniques I use to draw some of the characters in the campaign. Um, what I do with this technique is I start off in 3D, do a very rough sculpt just to get the shapes and the angles sorted out and a lighting setup, and then I'll paint over it. I find this method is a great way to uh, start to pitch your character in 3D, um, and that way you can turn them around getting different angles, figuring out how he looks from different directions. This is very useful if you're wanting to do, say, a graphic novel, like the ones I'm going to be overlaying here, where you can uh, quickly put together a character's face and a lot of different angles as they talk to each other. Um, yeah, but for the most part, it'll be a video of me painting over the very rough sculpt I do. I like to keep the sculpt loose so I'm not too tied to it when it comes to painting over. Um, and I'm also linked in my um, video channel below a tutorial by Marco Busey who um, got me started basically in this process. Um, it's a very good tutorial on how to quickly get into 3D and do a sculpt and get yourself started. So check that out too. It's very good stuff. And uh, yeah, the audio of the campaign is going to be playing in the background too. So enjoy that. We had a full house this time with everyone turning up. So it was pretty cool. Good to have everyone around the table. Okay, enjoy and I shall talk to you soon. Warning. Commercial. Wow. Wow. Right, so let's start with a, a brief recap <laughs> of uh, where everyone's at. Um, you're on the boat to your the pirate city of Yore. Um, you've all got your different reasons for being there, but for, my, for the most part, it's young men trying to make their own way in the world and uh, figure out what they want to do with their life. Um, first, first day there, you've learned that there could be a possible mutiny on the on the ship and uh, came up with a cunning plan to counteract any anything the mutineers would do. But unfortunately Duke Mooch had been playing with his cylinder safe and triggered a <laughs> gas trap that knocked him out. Um, and so it was left to the high IQ brains of <laughs> Arthur, Oram and Nibbles to come up with a plan which involved just beating people up, <laughs> which they did really well. Um, so throughout throughout the 12 seconds of battle, um, Groth, Mark, you were, you were in your room doing whatever you're doing in your room. Um, <laughs> you heard the rowdiness going outside. You even heard at one point someone just yelled, Mana! <laughs> um, and you just figured that those two guys from Blueport had gotten drunk and were just running around the boat. <laughs> being idiots, because you've uh, seen them in the streets of Blueport doing similar stuff. Um, yeah, and the mutiny was thwarted, and you freed the, Capt the Captain Winter's loyalists who were, um, who were locked downstairs. Um, corks came out naked, covered in corks, with his cork tattoos. Uh, he explains quickly that the reason he's naked is he was trying to crawl out the window. He was the smallest guy, so he could only fit out the window and he's trying to get to the top deck. Um, but you guys finished the fight so quickly that they just said, hey, come, come back down, we don't need to do this plan anymore. And, uh, and uh, yeah, and I believe it was Nibbles who uh, asked him a bit more about his his cork endeavour and even said they might help him find the cork, the blue moochie dooch. The blue moochie dooch. And so cork said, that would be great and I would love to sit down and tell you my tale. <laughs> I'm going to have to come up with a voice for corks now since <laughs> he's become a bit of a character. Um, and so yeah, Captain Winters, he's very excited as well and he's like, um, Oh, I want, I want everyone to hear though, and uh, the Duke, he is sleeping in my bed, and the other passenger is... I'll go, oh, I'll go get the other passenger who's in the, in the room. I'll go get the... And he pulls out his ledger of 
passengers again and says, The Grothmark, Grothmark, that's his name, the big green lad, I'll go get him. And, and um, Cork says, I, I think I know a way to take care of the Duke. Um, I'll be back in a second too. And so he, he leaves um, and he says, and the captain says, let us all meet back in the dining room in uh, five minutes. <laughs> And we will carry on the lock-in where I drink with you. <laughs> <laughs> so much better than the lock-out that I always used to do with my crew. <laughs> um, and so he, he shoots off and Cork shoots off. And we'll quickly cut to when Captain Winters finally talks to Grothmar. <laughs> who's been sitting in his room for two episodes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you hear a little tentative knock. At your passenger's door. It just keeps. <laughs> Hello, Grothmark! Hello, it is the captain. I can go wherever I want in the ship. I am just being polite. <laughs> <laughs> I am the captain of the ship. And as he said that, he's opened the door and he's walked. In. And this is all my beds and rooms, but oh, what are you doing? And what are you doing? Uh, he's sitting on his bed, squinting at a, at a letter. Oh, look, you were trying to read. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gr- Grothmark just kind of like nods at him, um, yep. kind of shows him the letter. Do you need, a, do you need help with that, <laughs> young man? <laughs> um, Grothmark just kind of looks at him. Uh, why knock if you can just come in? Exactly, I did not know. <laughs> <laughs> um, he says, uh, no, thank you, and just kind of puts the, the letter on. Oh, you are embarrassed of the big words. Uh, we, have, we have a story that uh, one of our crew is telling. It is a marvellous story about corks. Do you uh, find corks interesting? <laughs> uh, no, thank you, and he just kind of... And, uh, but he, um, <laughs> uh, uh, are we close to port? Uh, we are two days away. <laughs> You will need to leave this room at some point. <laughs> uh, Grothmark could use a stretch. Ah, you talk in the third person. <laughs> that is the next stage I want to get to. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Winters says, come with me. <laughs> is that how you do it? I don't know. Grothmark is kind of like, uh, I suppose. Good, good. You will come with me. Um, we will have drinks. Do you drink? Uh, I've been known to. Ah, yes. Come, come, come. And he reaches over and grabs you by the, your elbow and, and says, Come on, come on, you're being too shy. Can we can all read your letter for you together. <laughs> uh, I, I should be okay to work, work out words. <laughs> Really? You seem to be having trouble. <laughs> uh, Grafard kind of follows him. Mm-hmm. And as he's walking, Cap- the Captain Winters is already telling you about some sort of duel he had with a fencing master, and you're finding it very hard to put together without any context. But he's, and then I did this with my sword. Oh, did I tell you? I, yeah, about ten minutes ago, I killed a dragon <laughs> with one blow of my sword. Grafard's listening and just yeah. kind of nodding. It was actually a dragon born, but I figure... <laughs> Why say the whole word when dragons are so <laughs> Are there, are there still like the bodies of the crew <laughs> that we're walking past? You're being pushed overboard, but yeah, there's there's blood stains. You see a rather horrible greeny froth blood stain in the middle of the in the deck. Like you can't figure out how that one happened. And he said, and but he points over there and says, and that is where I slayed the dragon. Um, Arthur, Arthur tried to kill steal it from me right at the end. Did, did Grothmark like see the dragon born like as part of the crew when he was boarding or anything like that? Yeah, or like... He, he, he would have seen all the these people around. And he said, dragon though, right? Um, cool, yeah. Grothmark's just kind of just taking in the sight of the now like bloodied ship. Oh yes, yes, sorry. I don't even know if it had... We had a small mutiny before. <laughs> <laughs> we had the resort care of. Everyone is happy now. Everyone is on board. Those who are not on board are floating in the ocean. We rolled them off. There was only actually three that died. Three got knocked out and three gave up very quickly. But uh, yes, 
So no more mutinies, I do not think, at least tonight. We have two more days, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, yes, but uh, everything is under control now, and you will come with me, and you will dine, and we will drink, and I will tell you how I disarmed the noble rhubarb from the <laughs> Tournament of Kings. <laughs> the cabin is surprisingly soundproof. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes. Also, my crew, they are terrible fighters. <laughs> <laughs> they went down so quickly. It was, uh, I do not think their challenge ratings were accurate. <laughs> <laughs> um, and while you do that, you see this half-naked uh, gnome. He's put some pants on, but he says, he walks past you and he's carrying a thing of smelling salts. And he says, out of my way, I, I need to uh, apply some smelling soaps to the Duke. Uh, hello there, half ogre. My name is Cox. Do you like Cox? Uh, in what context? <laughs> <laughs> Every context you can think of. There are so many uses. Well, there's only really one use <laughs> for a cork. But, uh, all right, come in. I'll tell you all about it. It's, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. And he pushes past, and uh, as he comes up to the captain's bed, you're sleeping there peacefully. And he, he takes out the smelling salts, but he also takes out one of his corks. <laughs> and he says, this one is the scintillating sifter. Sifter. Scintillating <laughs> sifter. <laughs> yes. And what this one does is it magically enhances the flavors and powers of all natural ingredients. So <laughs> I do not know why I'm talking about Captain <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I mock him. <laughs> but what I normally do is uh, so I take the cork and I push it in the smelling salts. Because normal smelling salts ain't going to wake this bird up. He's activated something that was estimated to be 10 to 12 hours of sleep. We need to speed that up. <laughs> so he rubs the cork into the salt and then he holds it under your nose, mm. Duke Mooch. And suddenly this sharp intake of breath as you, your whole sinuses have just cleared and you've got the strongest almost mint it just pops you awake Sweet. and you're up <laughs> oh, oh, uh, uh, <clears throat> oh I see the uh, I see the plane went off perfectly oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Corks uh, the the captain's come in and he says, Ah, oh, yes, Duke, your plan was magnificent. 12 seconds. It took 12 seconds. We did everything. I didn't even need to get into my pajamas or cross any decks. We were thinking of doing that, but then we thought, Ah, oh, let's get to the crux of your plan, which involved killing my crew, I believe. Yeah, yeah, that was the entire point of the My, my plan was definitely to kill the crew and keep you absolutely alive. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was my entire plan. I'm glad it worked out. Honestly, look, uh, improvisation is the key to a good plan. So. Uh, yes, and we were very good. Uh, the three young young men here, the Arthur and the Autumn, are uh, the big O, oh, sorry, and the little Nibbles, they were magnificent, I must say, and no weapons amongst them. Once we arm these three, we can take <laughs> over the nations. <laughs> I'm telling you. But uh, yes, they were very good. Anyway, what I want to do now is get you out of my bed. Is, would that be all right? And we go in the dining room and hear the tale of corks. I'm DIY sure. I don't know why you looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> my plan was to originally maintain my use of this bed. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fine. But here we can go. We can go. Okay. So... A little time lapse later, you're all gathered around the table in the dining room. Corks is at the head of it, slowly slow stroking his Van Dyke beard, which is a moustache and a chin beard, rather braided together. Uh, he's taking you all in and uh, trying to add some gravity to what really is just a talk about corks. <laughs> <laughs> but this is his life's work and it, he wants to, uh, this is his passion. And he says, yes, Nibbles, keep your mouth covered, so can't see you laughing at me. And he says, so, it all started when I was a little lad. <laughs> I used to collect everything, you know. I used to collect bottle caps and string and playing cards, uh, as kids do. But one day, going through my collection of 
what then was basically junk. I came across the scintillating stopper. I think I called it the sifter. No, yeah. It could have been someone else. <laughs> um, Magic cork list. <laughs> and right then and there I knew I had something special. Because it was sparkly. And it was the first cork of power I ever found. <laughs> 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 Yes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they say there are 13 corks of power in this world. And I've found 12 of them. Some of them are pretty powerful and have magical properties. Some, like the scintillating stopper, just add a bit of flavor to whatever's in the potion bottle, but some are magically infused to contain the most powerful magical potions or magically infused alcohol known to man. Mm. Um, dear Cor, could you tell us what the name of the other 12 are? <laughs> <laughs> Don't interrupt my phone. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that probably next episode. <laughs> um, so I was hooked. Once I found one cork of power, of course you want to find the next cork of power. And I found 12 of them. And all that's left to find, as you know, is the rarest one of them all. The blue moochie dooch. <laughs> Now, Mooch, <laughs> yeah. you know that Moochie Dooch is a kinku word. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moochie means the good stuff. Yeah. It's kind of what you were named after as a slang term. Hey. Much like a uh, human can call their daughter Brandy. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mooch means the good stuff. Moochie means the good stuff. And Dooch means even better stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So, like so the rare Moochie Dooch is the good stuff, but even better than that. <laughs> <laughs> it is said to be the most powerful of corks and used to seal the most potent potions and infuse distilled spirits known to man. Now it's crafted by a remote band of Kenku monks that live in a far off monastery. I mean, I could have told you that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you would have already known most of this. They make the cork and the bottle to hold the cork every five years. Now, and they use it to contain an extremely powerful distilled spirit that they have brewed over that five-year time frame. That time of brewing, that five-year window, is coming up in two weeks. I am to be there and at least see the cork. Maybe there's a way to obtain it. I don't know. Usually a bottle of this powerful spirit goes for 5,000 gold pieces. So I can't afford that. And the monks use that to uh, fund their monastery for the next five years. And they also train in the most deadly fighting arts known to man. <laughs> Five years, because when they distill the final spirits and infuse it, it attracts all sorts of chaos. And the Kenku monks have to fight it off till the spirit has reached its maximum potency. For the uninformed of the room, where abouts is this monastery? <laughs> <laughs> it's in a place called the Cold Catch Mountains. Ah, it's on the okay. edge of Winter's Edge. We're, we're, we're now travelling to the land of Winter's Edge, where Yor is based. <clears throat> but where the winter, where the snow meets the civilised lands, there's a range of mountains called the Cold Catch Mountains. It's a dangerous trek to get there. It takes about a week. The first day or so will be fine, 
I'll be quite safe, but I'm a little worried about myself for the next four days after that. It's basically traveling through the wildlands. And I don't even know if me and my 12 corks of power can handle everything <laughs> out there. So I'm hoping that's where you come in. I've not seen what you can do, but I've heard what you can do. And it was 12 seconds of chaos, <laughs> of madness. And that's what I need. Just 12. 12 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Captain Winters. You can see he's been inspired by <laughs> Cork's speech. And he stands up. He's quite drunk too. He's been drinking <laughs> all throughout his first ever lockdown. And he stands and says, Gentlemen, chaps, I will fund this exhibition because I have come into a little bit of money lately now that I do not have to pay half my crew. <laughs> Let us, I will fund whatever you need to get you to the Cold Catch Mountains and return, and whatever profit you make, perhaps I take a small cut off the top. I am looking for a new enterprise. Let's be honest, I'm a terrible sea captain. <laughs> My crew always hates me. I almost go through a mutiny every time <laughs> I do this cargo passenger run. And all I'm doing is picking up cargo and taking passengers. It should be simple. <laughs> so I am looking for a new enterprise and I have seen what some of you can do. But I have I've also seen the Duke, who is a master tactician. Um, and Grothmark, I, I have seen you try to read and it was inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Never give up. Grothmark is no mathematician, but for 5,000 gold, it seems like we could get bottle. <laughs> well, I did not pay my crew that much. In fact, I was hoping we could maybe hire a wagon for uh, the trip there. I cannot, I cannot buy a bottle of the Moochie Dooch. It is uh, too much, but perhaps there is a way to get the cork and make corks happy and... Uh, you will see one of the rarest rituals known to man from what I can take. And Corks is like, it is an amazing sight. These Kinku monks, they for some reason train for five years. <laughs> <laughs> Many of them die, so it requires another five year cycle of retraining new monks for this ritual. So what say you? Will you ride with me to the Cold Catch Mountains? and have a chance to lay your eyes on the most powerful cork man has ever known, apart from myself. <laughs> um, well, Grothmark says, Grothmark would take the free ride to the wildlands and help out along the way. Then we'll pull out a little book and he writes down, gain fame, and he's like, yeah, of course, let's go. <laughs> Excellent, how about you? Big O. Yeah, I think Big O would just be like, oh, I don't really care about the cork, but whatever's in that bottle, I want to give it a go away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you almost noticed when they said the most powerful, <laughs> potent spirit known to man that Big O's eyes glazed over. <laughs> oh. New life gone. And, and you, Arthur? Yeah, sounds like a bit of fun. <laughs> And what about you, Duke? You've got business interests, I know, here in your... Mm. You've got a... Uh, rub shoulders with nobility. But have you ever seen the rare blue Mooji Duke? I mean, naturally, of course I have. I'm a kinku. <laughs> but, um, look, it is, a, it is a sight to behold. And I think an enterprise is always my game. So, look, um, just as long as that I'm on the points system for the, the, the ratio here, we'll be fine. I can also provide some supplies. I've got many aware downstairs that would be massively useful once we deliver them to the uh, client once we get to your. So um, I'd be happy to sit on top of this. There's another co-benefactor. 
Ah, you can say. You can see Captain Winters is so. You and I work together. Exactly. As partners, business partners. As business partners. <laughs> as equal. equals. Equal. Exactly. You and me as equal. equal I am yeah. equal to this magnificent man. <laughs> <laughs> what a trip this has been. It's humbling the way you approach me. But look, man, think nothing of it. It'll be just a fine time. So, <clears throat> by the way, though, we will need a front from you, um, Captain Saw. You know, if we're going to go to this place, we're going to need clothes, we're going to need uh, clothes, yes. we need blankets, yes. we need provisions, yes. robes, um, oh. thieves kits, you got those? You need a few of those. I can, we can find yeah. thieves kits. And Cork says, I can help outsource anything you need in your, you can find anything you want. There's a rather large criminal underground there. Uh, Is there? Yeah, so... Oh. <laughs> Well, you won't need to bother with that though, Duke. We'll, we'll keep oh, you no. in your noble circles. You won't touch. I keep myself above such things regularly. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, Captain Winters raises a glass and says, Well, to our new expedition. What say you chaps? Ha ha! Yeah. It's no rare pomegranate pumpernickel pop cap, is it? But anyway, yeah, so don't, don't ask me. I'm not the expert on the matter. You look at Cork's like, are you talking of the 14th? I don't know how many years I've got. Hey, 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 Corks, hey, Corks, mm-hmm. you, you wouldn't happen to have like a, a spare magic cork, would you? Any, any doubles up that you, you keep for saving I, for special I, occasion? I could because it, you, you were totally right. A lot of these corks double up these more magical ones. I keep the twelve on me, but there are duplicates. Um, you, which you, you wouldn't have any, would you? Well, we'll go have a look in my chest. Perhaps maybe this can be a uh, a little sweetener to the deal if you guys travel with me. Yeah. Nibbles is jumping up and down. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Perhaps you can start your own necklace. And <laughs> <laughs> you can kind of see that he's. Almost feeling like a fatherly figure has found <laughs> some young young guy who's taken an interest in his hobby. Nibbles <laughs> like rips off a bit of his shirt and fashions a real small necklace around his neck. It's like that's the spirit. Of that. I think we'll start you off with the uh, the uh, Tabernacle Choir. <laughs> that's uh, spelt with the Q. The choir. <laughs> <laughs> What's that one do? I don't know half the names of these corks. I just make up. <laughs> <laughs> Who names a cork, really? <laughs> okay, and so, yeah, you guys drink through the night. Um, friendships are formed, conversations are had. Um, even Grothmark starts to open up a bit. Does anyone have any questions for this new guy at the table. <laughs> He'll be like, what's your name again, bro? Grothmark. Oh, I've seen you around town, eh? But you're pretty quiet, eh? Arthur's pretty quiet, too. <laughs> Why don't you say anything to anybody, bro? Uh, people don't like half ox. Oh, bro, I don't judge, eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you seem pretty cool, bro. I've never seen a green dude before, but, like, fuck if you want to be mates, we can share a drink. Yeah. I don't know about all these corks, but I want to get pissed at when get there. <laughs> Once we get to the monastery, bro. Um, yeah, he nods. He says, uh, I'm traveling to the wildlands, I think. Um, so enjoy company for the ride. That well, sounds pretty serious, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. Mm-hmm. Nice. Oh, yeah, I've got to speak to the, the Duke as well, eh? Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll, go, I'll come to you, Merchant, just be like, uh, Bro, it was pretty crack up when that pipe farted in your face and you passed down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm honestly, I just wanted a nap, eh? So. Oh, yeah, it's fair enough, eh? I wasn't even under anything, I just thought I'd have a nap. Nah, it was yeah. a pretty tactical play, bro, I could respect that. <laughs> exactly. Um, but we had to go through your pockets to see if we could oh. find the fucking plans if you'd written them down, eh? Because oh. I didn't know what was going on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was that so? Oh, I was pretty pissed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but it turns out you know my uncle, eh? Mm. Your uncle, please, please, uncle, uncle, please remind. <laughs> So you had, had a note that said uh, Quince Quigley. Yeah. Uh, your uncle's Quince Quigley of uh, he's staying in Greece Town, yeah. twelve Mule Stock Lane. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know my uncle Quince, bro. That's who my dad told me to go see. Oh, <laughs> funny. Well, I don't. I don't actually know Quince on my first name basis, but um. Oh, I heard he's a good cut. Does he? Oh, oh I do like good cuts. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, honestly, like, if we could go there together, maybe help me uh, introduce. I've got a um, little phrase I have to say to him. But you understand? I'm sure. Yeah, oh. sure. Whatever, bro. I don't care. <laughs> we'll go see him together if you want to meet him. Have you met your uncle? No, I don't think so. Oh yeah, yeah that checks out. I'm pretty wasted <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> 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 I have noticed. No, look, honestly, let's, uh, let's go this together. Yeah, yeah, sounds good, bro. Mm. Okay, good. Anyone else? Uh, Grothmark, what's that thing you're carrying? Yeah, points to his drum. Yeah. Um, it is a drum. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you play songs on it? I... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, less songs and more rhythm. Do you want to drop us a beat? <laughs> it is not a toy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so none of you really feel any place in a cross <laughs> <laughs> uh, good. But yeah, as the night rolls on, uh, Captain Winters stretches finally and says, we have a big day tomorrow, a full day of sailing. One more night of dinner where I will tell you all about your, um, there are some things I need to tell you to warn you. It is an unusual city. Um, but let us retire to our bedrooms. Everyone can go to their pre-arranged beds <laughs> <laughs> that we have already agreed upon. <laughs> And, uh, just in case of second mutiny. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually just thinking, could it perhaps be in your best interest to take my spot, not take yours? Ah, you were talking about I'm, the plan. I'm fresh from not having combat, so I'm ready to rip and go if anyone tries to sneak in and take in the night. Ah, you think there could be interest. more mutineers? Certainly, absolutely. <laughs> Based on your own self-affirming poor ship and skills, ah, yes. we must play for all angles here. So, honestly, next to this man, look at him, he's huge, he's got a giant drum. You could be anywhere safer. Whereas on the other hand, I'm quite good in the night. So let me in the bed. If anyone comes up, I'll kill him. Another mutiny done for you. For free. No charge. Okay. Roll a persuasion. Hey, you've got two uses of that arm. Oh, I can do the advantage as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to use one of my Kenku dailies. Since it's almost bedtime. Nice. It's a 24. <laughs> <laughs> Again, he's packing your... <laughs> <laughs> My new business partner, he, he, he knows. Here's the planner. Here's the planner. I, I hear you. about you. Oh, I am touched. I am touched. Come, Grothmark. <laughs> <laughs> he takes you by the elbow. <laughs> gets away. All of us back to the bedroom. <laughs> we might even have another lock in. <laughs> and I uh, retire to bed. Um... You all sleep quite well, uh, recover any injuries that you've had, um, nothing was too too damaging, I don't think most of you got touched, and Arthur, it was just from your first flight with Flagstaff. Uh, yeah, and so you wake up, you wake up early-ish, um, some nursing hangovers, some better at handling them than others. I take it you hardly get affected by... No, I just carry on drinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Pure. So you have to stop drinking to get a hangover, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, Nibble's not the strongest drinker. No, nah, but he's got a hangover. <laughs> yeah. But he's also been a pirate, so he's, he's dealt with this. Um, Grothmark, sort of... Drinker are you? I don't think he drank much. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, he didn't get too He's, much of a chance. I think pretty resilient naturally from like the orc side, yeah. but yeah. doesn't isn't much of like a socialite. So yeah, yeah, was just there because he got pulled out of the room basically. Yeah, you do have a small headache because Captain Winters was trying to talk to you <laughs> <laughs> and says, "Crossmark, are you awake?" <laughs> Scooch. And he just combines all sorts of stuff with 
Sometimes I don't think the crew respects me. Yeah, and Arthur, you probably sleep quite deeply. You've had a long day. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, I don't imagine booze hits me very. No, you've got a outstanding constitution (laughs) and a poison resistance. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're often you match drinks with uh, your young friend, but um, often you're the one that watches out over him once he gets really rowdy and (laughs) then you hope that the red mist doesn't take you over and uh yeah so you're going to have a whole day on the boat we can either well go around and see if anyone wants to do anything for a general downtime flavor there's uh it's kind of a lazy day on the boat before the night um so i'll start with you big O, is there, how would you spend your day? I want to go find that chick that I saved. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> Very good, yeah. So, yeah, you wander the decks for a while and you find her um, trying to tie a knot somewhere. You can tell, not in being a sea person, that she's she's struggling with it. But she sees you coming and says, Ah, there, I'm tying a shank knot, she fell. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's like, Oh, that's right, you know who I am. <laughs> And she says, how are you? How? how? <laughs> I'm still a little bit drunk, to be honest. Eh? <laughs> how are you doing? You seemed like pretty messed up yesterday. Eh? I was so close to death, you would not believe it. <laughs> <laughs> you really were. <laughs> <laughs> that little rabbit almost tore my throat out. <laughs> um, but yes, I've recovered. It didn't take long. I only had to recover one hit point. <laughs> <laughs> That was half my life. <laughs> <laughs> she only had two hit points. <laughs> <laughs> so lucky not to die. <laughs> and she says, "Yes, but now, now I'm, um, I'm feeling much better, and I'm feeling inspired. We're almost to your, and uh, yeah. So what I've been doing, I, I should tell you, is, I'm a, I'm a method actress, and <laughs> I've been researching a role as a pirate captain so i thought what better way to learn how to be a sailor than go on a boat and join in mutinies <laughs> <laughs> but now looking back it's a terrible idea and i'm going to get off this boat as soon as i can and find an acting job in york there are there's a noble there's two two areas to you or there's the rough pirate rah, we're pirates which I can fit in now seamlessly. <laughs> Arr, I'm a pirate. And there's a nobles district where there's old old families that still pretend to well be nobles and there's all sorts of wonderful things there. There's theatres and songs and musicals and culture and class. I don't know anything about that. But it sounds real nice, eh? So what part are you gonna go to? Oh definitely the nobles district. <laughs> and yes, I'm gonna Find an actors guild there and fit in seamlessly and become a famous actress. <laughs> yes, and I have you to thank for it because yes, you could have easily killed me. I saw you knock out three people. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was just for a laugh. Eh? No, I, would never, I would never knock out a lady, especially not one as pretty as you. Oh, that rabbit would. Yeah, I know that rabbit's crazy, bro. I don't know what's going on with him. <laughs> He tore out Captain Scabber's throat with his teeth. <laughs> it was pretty terrifying. <laughs> Honestly, I thought we were just doing a performance. Like, oh, let's pretend we're muted in the ship. And it got very serious very fast when uh, Captain Scabber died. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, I, I am so grateful for you. Um, you've saved my life. And as I say, um, my name is Ruples. And if ever you need a favor or some help with anything, you come and find me. And when I am extremely famous, hmm. you will be able to do whatever you like in your, I'm sure of it. Awesome, thanks, good to know, way. Eh? I didn't really expect anything in return, it's all good, but... <laughs> I can at least buy you a drink. Oh, yeah, I love drinks. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, I thought so. <laughs> but now I must go back to 
being a pirate is just as... <laughs> <laughs> Away with you, you little scoundrel. <laughs> Sweet, yeah, sure. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah, she seems recovered, um, a little bit traumatised. She's made some poor life decisions, but she has learned a bit about seamanship. <laughs> <laughs> Highlight of the last episode. Uh, Arthur, uh, probably just be hanging around the boat, like arm um, wrestling the crew, and like. Okay, give me a few twenty rolls. Oh, I'll, I'll count it because young Dorsey was ch- challenged to an arm wrestle at one point, wasn't he? By Big O, though. Yeah. But uh, so That's Dorsey's strange. the first. Oh, we rolled a 15 minus 2. <laughs> Still good. <laughs> nine. That's a strength check, right? Yeah. yeah. Nine. Nine? Oh. Dorsey gets a drop on you. <laughs> and he's like, ah, you know. out of three. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, yeah. <coughs> right. 11. 14. Okay. So you beat Dorsey once. 16. You win. <laughs> yeah, so the next two, you slay young Dorsey, and the crew's like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he beat Dorsey two out of three, and it's pretty impressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, you integrate yourself with the crew. They're, um, you become their new tough guy on the ship because you knocked out their, the Flagstaff, the big bully, and you're a much nicer person than Flagstaff. So, yeah, the crew are all behind you, and... Um, Start a mutiny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad idea. You know, I could be captain. <laughs> yeah, you could be captain. <laughs> so yeah, you guys also see um, Arthur just making the rounds. A sociable, pleasant dwarf when he's um, not taken by the red mist. And yeah, the, he's, he spends his day with the crew, rolling dice, arm um, wrestling. Duke. Um, I don't really want to do anything in the daytime, but after the captain goes to his chambers with um, Brothmark, I'd like to steal some of his stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, does he have his, like clothes in abundance? Does he have many of something? Uh, yeah, he's definitely... You can um, see he's got a wardrobe, mm. and it is packed with noble-type clothes. Mm. Um, he's fashioned himself after the dashing figures that are found in Winter's Edge. You can see he's even got a little bookshelf full of the adventures of Sir Percival Bartlesby. <laughs> awesome. Um, I'd like to take maybe just one or two sets of the noble's clothing. Two sets. Let's do two sets of the noble's clothing. Yeah. You can, you can find a few that you can make fit yourself. He's a slight man and he has had a lot of stuff tailored to fit. But yeah, you find yourself a few um, choice pieces mm. that are a bit more billowy, maybe a bit more room in the shoulders. Um, and how do you stash such pieces? Well, I was hoping I could just kind of sneak to my cargo and just chuck it in my uh, the, the goods they're already transporting for me. <laughs> <laughs> you mean down in the cargo? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, let's just for the fun of it, make <coughs> a stealth check. It'll be a very uh, 21. Yeah, yeah. So easily, you um, you can stash whatever you want in your, in your cargo. In there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And as you're looking in there, you do see that it's a very large machine, about the size of this table, mm-hmm. and about such that high as the, the crate that it's stored in. Okay, cool. And it's a large machine with lots of moving parts. You can't tell what it is yourself. There's, but there are, you do see like a tray with lots of steel letters like A, B, C, D, mm-hmm. E, F, G mm-hmm. um, that can be slotted in places and cool. stuff like that. Nice, nice. Okay, yeah. awesome. And yeah, you find a space in there where you can just stash a few of um, Captain Winter's I, I have a pack right as well. Do I not? Do yeah, I? yeah. Also, I'd like to keep one column <clears throat> in the pack so that if I need to cool, change cool. clothing, I'll be good. Yeah. And if you want to, um, because you're looking for specific items of clothing, if you want to, um, to yourself, describe how the outfits look, you're quite welcome to, I awesome. Because, yeah, he's got quite a selection, yeah, so cool. you'll find a look that you're after. Awesome. You, I got yeah. it, yeah, I'm down. I'm down. Cool, cool. Okay. Um, I mean, I could just talk about now, which is basically yeah. just like a, um, 
a red overcoat with like the golden inlay along the sides, like those Spanish kind of general ones, but they were always about the sailor. So I grabbed one of those and a nice billowy white silk shirt, no pants. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Just so I can, you know, pop the jacket on when I need to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you're not going to be wearing them, right? The no, not no, no, no. Just for, <laughs> just, just, yeah. Yeah, just to help. Yeah, so keep an eye on that for whenever you need to uh, dress as a dashing noble. Awesome. Or, yeah. Cross the mark. Um, probably a couple of things. Kind of busying himself around the ship. Um, just kind of, who was the stat being? Like, Sailor just kind of generally knowing roughly this kind of, like, housekeeping stuff. So mm-hmm. just like generally making himself busy um and then just kind of staying around captain winters um just listening to his like ramblings um and then when he can he'll kind of steal a couple moments to slink away i don't know down under the bitters away from the hustle bustle and just kind of read over his letter when he can cool cool um, I also meant to tell you there is one other half orc on the ship. Oh, yeah. Um, one of the crew members there. So I don't know if that interests you or not, or if you're introverted and wouldn't deal with uh, it. He would probably go over and try and um, kind of. When he could try and get this half orc not around people. Um, yeah. Just try and like. Read. Start. Yeah. <laughs> Help. <laughs> <laughs> Um, try and kind of spark up a conversation. Cool, cool. So, yeah. He sees you approaching at one point while he's... You see he's sharpening one of his swords. Um, and he he looks at you and he's like, Ah! Hello there. My, my name's Lou. And he puts out his hand. Um, more of a human-type greeting than a orc-type greeting. He's a half-orc too. Yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, Gruff Marshall... <coughs> kind of consider some stuff almost like going for not that greeting you're almost almost like yeah. a clumsy like fist yeah. bump type situation and then uh, yeah. kind of recover and, and Lou's like oh, oh sorry I, I don't know the orcish ways myself uh, and he tries to match what you're doing <laughs> you get that all with white guys trying to do a cool <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. yeah. Um, uh, yeah and then uh, Grothmark's just going to be like Look, I'm sorry, this whole thing becomes quite tedious, uh, keeping up this facade. Um, he's going to say, my name's Grass Mark, but really, you can call me Mark. Ah, uh, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Lou. Um, or you can call me Grass Lou. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure's all mine. Thank you. Uh, what, are you, what are you doing? You're leaving Blueport? Uh, yeah, I'm actually trying to find uh, the homeland, really. Um, uh-huh. Getting back to your roots. In a sense, yes. Um, uh, It was just me and my father, and he's actually, like, three days ago just died. Um, Um, Sorry (laughs) to hear that. Thank you, thank you. Um, He was an orc, obviously. He was actually uh, just a normal, what's a, is it common, like, human? Um, Oh, really? So your your mother was an orc? Quite, yes. uh, Strange, I know. How does that work? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't thought too much about it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't venture it. Don't venture it. Um, you don't see that very often, though. It's usually no, you don't, yes. Uh, aggressive orc male who uh, has his way with the... Such as the stereotype, yes, it is. Oh, so your father... Your f- mother raided your father's <laughs> Is this how it works? According to him, he actually had some uh, peculiar tastes <laughs> and um, stumbled across my mother in some um, uh, unfortunate times when she was uh, forced to uh, oblige these peculiar tastes of... Uh, ah, you're talking about the uh, knife and fork? That is what he wrote in his letter, yes. Ah, yes. <laughs> one of the uh, old brothels of yore has shut down, unfortunately. Oh, that answers one of my questions, thank you. Yes. Are you very familiar with your? Uh, yeah, I've done a bit of knife and fork in my time. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, do you know the name Clementine? <laughs> <laughs> he says, there are a few Clementines. Uh, but yeah, yeah, fortunately it shut down and was replaced with a half elf establishment. Much more demand for a. Uh, <laughs> Fine half elf woman than orc females. <laughs> and the orcs that can 
they're very poor, you know. There are very poor people, so yes, they don't really pay good money for an awkward woman. <laughs> this is a very awkward person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. You were talking about the motherland. You were getting back to the wildlands. Uh, tried to track her down, yes. Um, uh, I had no idea where she went um, after giving me up to my father. So, um, yeah, just, just heading in that direction, really. There's not much out there anymore. Um, the humans have taken most of the livable areas and the ice melts, the ice flows that are coming down from the south have eaten up most of the hawk lands. Um, yeah, they were given certain lands and certain areas, but even then the human expansions have keep moving them on. Um, many have been shipped overseas. It's going to be tough to find it, my friend. Well, I have nothing but time, so I guess I start um, asking around the old night before. Ah, uh, yeah, Mary. yeah. There was an owner there. His name was uh, Cretan Creed. Cretan Creed. Um, he fell on hard times when <clears throat> the knife and fork closed down. It's breaking up as a comment. Sorry. <laughs> Was that Cretan Creed? Cretan Creed. Cretan. Yeah. Like the boxer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know where he, he got to. He's, uh, as I said, he fell on hard times. It kind of fell off the face of the earth. Uh, he could have gone the way of a lot of orcs, begging. Uh, might have moved on himself. I'll put out a word too when I get there if you like. And... Uh, See if I can track you down afterwards. I appreciate the help. Sorry, what was his name again? Lou. Lou, that's a gross Lou. Yeah, he seems quite a pleasant guy. He's uh, very m muscular. <laughs> and he is always sharpening his weapons. <laughs> oh, and he frequently asks questions. Well, I'm very appreciative that you weren't part of the mutiny because it didn't seem like it ended well for those four fellows. Yeah, yeah. No, I was locked in the... Uh, room with a naked gnome, which <laughs> is never the most pleasant thing, but at least he wasn't talking about orcs. Uh, yeah, but I see you guys did well. Most of those guys don't know how to fight at all, so it was doomed, doomed, doomed before it started. I'm pretty sure one of them's a woman as well. <laughs> the rabbit? <laughs> I actually didn't know anything about it. I was just in my room. I didn't hear a thing. Oh. Uh, but you are mixing and mingling with the passengers now? I, uh, out and about, in a sense. Um, yeah. But, yes, uh, it, it seems like the good ones survived. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely uh, I'd recommend when you get into your that you hang around these folk. Um, Orcs and the Udai, the rabbit folk, that they are looked down on, even in your. Uh, but yeah, they're, uh, they're both a poor people now that the plains have been mostly eaten up with the ice flows. Uh, they've been displaced and haven't fitted in well with human society, mainly because of humans. It's nothing that I'm not used to already. Yeah, I get you. <laughs> It's sometimes easier just to stay on a boat than to stay between shores, to be honest. <coughs> That's some quite good advice, I might tell. Uh, depending on how unlucky my search becomes, I might um, uh, join you on your next expedition. Yeah, well, we've got three new positions just freshly <laughs> opened up. <laughs> you know what? Screw the homeland. I'm joining the <laughs> And the sun sets on <laughs> I no, appreciate your time. Uh, I'll go back to making myself busy. Ah, oh, cool. I mean, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Uh, nibbles. Um, nibbles, the first, well, first thing he would have done was grabbed, uh, he grabbed Scabby's hat, hat, right? Yeah. So he would have used his claws and cut two holes in it and stuck, his, stuck it on his head with his ears poking out. Uh -huh. um, and then he would have, like, probably spent the day annoying cork 
like trying to find more out about the magical corks because he's never heard of magical corks before and they sound freaking awesome to him. Yeah. So yeah, he he'll talk to you incessantly about the corks. He's yeah. you can't shut him up. He'll... I will literally write everything down. Great, great. Yeah. So yeah, I'll give you big knowledge checks bonuses whenever you need cork type Because <laughs> 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 he's a wealth of information that basically knows everything about corks. You yeah. get from what you get from him, you can kind of understand that there are very powerful potions out there full of magic that a normal bottle and cork just can't contain or that the magic will seep out and lose its powers so they need to create these extra powerful corks that are, some of them are almost like artifact level <laughs> <laughs> to, to uh, contain the most powerful magics. Um, he even mentions that there's rumours that some of them contain not just alcoholic spirits but spirits of powerful creatures um you know almost like genie bottles and stuff like that it's fascinating <laughs> <laughs> levels is down yeah super cool okay and so you guys um it's smooth sailing for the day the weather's good it's a light breeze uh, very few clouds in the sky. It's actually quite beautiful out as the bloated barnacle makes its way across the oceans between Blueport to the city of Yore. And um, a lot of you find yourself looking out on the horizon as the sun slowly sets and a red glow settles across the deck 